Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Katie. Today I'm going to show you how to put an exterior door into a concrete wall with the caveat of the hole is already cut. So we're starting from there. Before we get into it, this channel is about DIY, home decor, and remodeling. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button. The first thing I need to do is attach some framing to either side of my door opening so that I have something to attach my door to. I have two two by six green treated boards that I'm going to attach directly to the concrete flush to the outside of the wall with these three inch concrete anchors. Although you can't get boards wide enough to bridge the complete depth of the wall, you only need to have them wide enough to fit behind your door jam and standard door jams are four and nine sixteenths. So five and a half inches is plenty. I'm going to pre-drill my two bys with four evenly spaced holes using a regular drill bit. And I just want to make sure that the size of bit I'm using is smaller than the head of the concrete anchors I'll be using. Next, I'm going to hold my board in place and using the holes I just drilled as a guide, I'm going to use my hammer drill and a masonry bit to make a hole in the concrete. The easiest way that I found to do this is to insert your anchor as soon as you have your hole drilled, rather than trying to hold your board in place while you pre-drill all four holes. Then once your first anchor is in, simply work your way down the board, first pre-drilling four and then installing the rest of your concrete anchors. Making sure that the outside edge of your 2 by is remaining flush with the outside edge of your wall. Now that the framing is set, I'm ready to set my door jam. I take the door out for this part because I'm small, but this is also a great thing to do if you just don't hate your back. So first of all, I'm just going to test fit it. And then just push it up so that this trim, which is called brick mold, is flush against my framing in this case. Once I know that my frame will fit in the opening, I'm going to check to make sure that the bottom of my door is either level or very close to it. Next, I'm going to set my frame aside and using some PL400 adhesive, all weather, because it's January, I'm going to spread it all over the bottom of the opening. You probably won't need quite that much, but my concrete is tipping this way a little bit, so I just want to make sure I have everything covered. This glue is going to serve two purposes in that it's not only going to glue your door into place, but once you have everything shimmed in the right place, it's going to keep your frame from settling and going wonky over time. Next, I'm going to take some Volcom polyurethane sealant or any other kind of exterior caulking. This is just my favorite. And I'm going to apply a bead to the back side of the brick mold all the way around both sides and the top. Once all my glue and caulking is in place, I'm ready to tip my frame into place. If possible, you want to get your bottom in first and then tilt your top in. That way your frame is sitting down onto the glue that's under the sill rather than just smooshing it inside. I'm going to set the hinge side of my door before I level my sill. So all I need to make sure of is that either the sill is completely level or the hinge side is higher. So if it's lower, I would stick a shim in there to get it level or higher before I set this side, but mine is already higher, so I'm going to ignore the sill for now. Most new doors come with screws to hang your door that match the finish of your door hinges. With the bottom of my frame centered between my two two bys, I'm going to remove one of the hinge screws on my bottom hinge, and I want to make sure it's one of the screws that's in towards the middle of the frame. Then I'm going to take some shims at exactly where the door is sitting, fill in the space between the framing and my jam. Then, making sure that the brick mold on the outside of my door is pressed tightly against the wall, I'll screw in the longer installation screw. Once my bottom hinge is set, I'm going to set the top hinge. Holding my six foot level tightly against the face of my bottom hinge, I'm going to shim the space behind my top hinge in the framing until my level reads completely plumb. Next, I'm going to replace one of the top hinge screws with a longer installation screw to hold my jam and the shims in place. Next, I'm going to shim behind my middle hinge, this time using my level as a straight edge. I'm going to shim behind my middle hinge until it is touching the level at the same time that the top and the bottom hinges are touching the level, with no spaces between any of the hinges and the level. And once my three hinges are completely plumb, I will replace one of the middle hinge screws with an installation screw. Now that I have the hinge side of my jam set, I'm going to put my door back on and put the frame the rest of the way around. First, I'm going to level the sill by shimming up the low side until my level reads level. Then, using my door as a straight edge, I'm going to shim the strike side of my door jam so that I have about an eighth of an inch gap between my door and the door jam all the way around the door. 
Then, gently pulling aside the weather stripping, I'm going to install long screws behind the weather stripping to hold the shims on the strike side of my jam in place. Again, making sure that the brick mold on the outside of the door jam is pressed tightly against the wall. So once I have my door frame completely set, I'm gonna take my 16 gauge nailer and go around and nail the face of the brick mold into the framing. And since we're outside, make sure your nails are galvanized. Next, I'm going to take my handy dandy Volcom and run a bead of caulking around the outside and the inside of the brick mold, all the way around both legs and the top. Next, I spray foamed all of the cracks between the wall and the framing and the framing and the jam, but my camera died. Because we didn't leave enough room in the rough opening to put a stud between the door jam and the lintel, there wasn't anything for me to screw the top of the jam into. So that's where it's really important to pick up some window and door spray foam. It's a little less intense, so it doesn't compress your door jam and mess up your openings. To be extra sure, I also stuck some shims between the top of the door and the jam to preserve the spacing while the spray foam dried. To address a small elephant in the room, this method does leave your framing exposed. On this particular job site, it's not going to be a problem because this whole side of the house is getting sighted this spring. However, if you want to install this kind of door and this kind of setup without siding the whole side of the house, all you would have to do is remove the brick mold that comes with your door and replace it with a different exterior trim that was wide enough to cover your framing. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me in the comments down below. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful, I would love it if you would hit that like button and consider subscribing. And I'll see you next time. Bye!